Would you believe me if I told you that there are more than 50 states in the United States? Well, technically, the others are not really states, but are called territories. There are 14 of them. Can you believe that? Five of them are what you would consider a territory if we're talking about size. The other nine are what's called minor outlying islands. They're really interesting, but we don't hear much about them in school. If your teacher breezed through it, you're probably not listening and thinking about going home wanting to level up in a video game or thinking about having drinks with friends. But anyway, welcome back to World IQ. Today, we will be looking over these 14 lesser known but interesting US territories. Let's get it. Number 1. Guam With a population of 170,000, this island is the westernmost point and territory of the US in Oceania. The tropical climate is always perfect for tourism. It's got a fascinating history. According to National Geographic, in 1521, Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan introduced European settlers to the island, and by royal proclamation, he turned it into a Spanish colony. Guam, along with Puerto Rico, Cuba, and the Philippines, came under American control when Spain lost the Spanish-American War in 1898. Guam, however, was put under the Secretary of the United States Navy. U.S. military leaders controlled Guam, and did you know that during World War II, the Japanese occupied Guam shortly after they bombed and invaded the island? It's crazy, because this happened just a few hours after Pearl Harbor. Chamonos make up 40% of Guam's population, while Filipinos make up 26%. Coconuts, bananas, rice, and taro root vegetables are indigenous to the island and are a big part of the local diet. The people here are very nice. My mom's best friend lives in Guam along with her family. She said it's convenient because you get to still experience the dollar while enjoying the tropical climate. Number 2. American Samoa The Samoan Islands were settled by Polynesians. Then the Dutch navigator Jacob Roggeveen sighted Samoa in 1722 and other European explorers and traders followed. In 1878, there was a treaty signed for the US to establish a naval station in Pago Pago Harbor. In 1899, Samoa was divided into spheres of influence. Germany took the western past, and the US went to the eastern island. It was only in 1904 that all islands were given to the US. The Samoans didn't like all this foreign meddling, and they took control of the country's affairs in 1977. Peter Coleman was elected as the first governor. Do you know what's interesting? Their laws are kind of different from the ones in the US. They're the only territory who do this. While US nationals can freely move to American Samoa, they still have to go through the whole immigration office of the American Samoan government. The economy is fueled by services and manufacturing. A huge part of the national income comes from the US federal government in the form of grants. They don't have much employment opportunities here, but they do have very large tuna canneries. Another interesting fact about it is that they have the highest rate of military enlistment in any US state or territory. Their population of 48,000 can say the same thing about how beautiful their island is. It's cinematic that I can see this place having its tropical romance movie. Number 3. Northern Mariana Islands Welcome to the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, a self-governing commonwealth in association with the United States. There are three main islands here, namely Saipan, Tinian, and Rhoda. Archaeological evidence tells us that the first human settlers here were Southeast Asians. The Portuguese navigator Ferdinand Magellan was the first European to arrive on the islands in 1521. Yeah, he was really in a lot of places before. He landed in Guam and claimed the whole area for Spain. It was an apparent culture clash. By the 19th century, 
the Marianas had become involved in European colonial rivalries. There's a whole story to this that we can't fit in one video. But anyway, the Marianas also played an important role during World War II. The Japanese took control of Guam and the Marianas. They became the south and east extensions of Japanese forces. Today, tourism is the principal economic activity of the island. They also do a lot of farming and investors from Korea, China, and the Philippines have expanded the island's production of clothing and accessories, making the garment industry an important component of their economy. Cultural diversity has been on the rise. There are a lot of Filipino, Chinese, and Korean communities. Currently, their population is around 50,000. Number 4. United States Virgin Islands Located on the eastern end of the Greater Antilles, this territory is composed of three large islands, St. Croix, St. John, and St. Thomas, and about 50 islands. Christopher Columbus arrived here in 1493. You already know about colonialism. A Spanish expedition defeated the locals and claimed the islands for Spain. There's also a whole story here about English and French settlers farming on St. Croix, then the Spaniards evicting them, then the Danes came, slave revolts happened, slavery was abolished in 1848, and the US bought the island from the Danes. They created a governmental structure that had elections and all that. Currently, their economy is based primarily on tourism and government service, trade, encompassing personal, business, and domestic services including tourism, manufacturing, and finance, real estate, and insurance. They're a popular cruise stop, so you got a lot of money coming in. Most of the population of 106,000 is black, and some white mixed in the Asian communities. Number 5. Puerto Rico Officially known as the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, this unincorporated territory of the U.S. sits in the northeastern Caribbean. The first settlers were hunter-gatherers who arrived at the island a millennium before the Spanish. So again, colonial stuff. Then the Puerto Ricans worked for an independent government in 1880. Spain ceded the islands to the U.S. under the provisions of the 1898 Treaty of Paris that ended the Spanish-American War. The Puerto Rican economy relies heavily on services and manufacturing. Before it was purely agricultural. From the 1970s, the island had a large middle-class population. Even if its median household income is far below the US, the majority of Puerto Ricans live a modest lifestyle by Caribbean standards. They have picturesque beaches here and the tropical climate makes it the ideal location for swimming. According to the latest census in 2020, their population is around 3.2 million. Number 6. Wake Island Situated between Guam and Hawaii, being in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, this island has seen its fair share of violence. During World War II, a lot of serious battles were going on around this area. The Japanese first struck the island on December 8, 1941 with tactical bombers launched from the Marshall Islands. On December 11, a Japanese naval task force attempted to land their troops on Wake Island's south shore. A lot of fighting happened, and two Japanese destroyers were sunk. Yeah, I know the historical facts are not as complete, but this isn't a history lesson, guys. Come on. There is a lot of material online if you want to dive deep into the stories. Anyway. The US military only kept a presence on Wake Island until 2017. Right now, nobody lives there. Number 7. Johnston Atoll This is an incorporated territory of the US in the Central Pacific Ocean, about 825 miles southwest of Honolulu. It was discovered in 1796 by an American ship and sighted in 1807 by an English mariner. Captain C.G. Johnson, hence the name. It's just an airbase, a testing site for nuclear and biological weapons, a secret missile base, well, not much of a secret now is it? 
Nobody goes there anymore. We just monitor it. But really? We've seen enough movies to know that the US has a lot of secrets to keep, right? Just kidding. Number 8. Midway Island. I have seen the movie. Have you? And man, was it intense. I think I cried when Japan lost most of its best naval pilots and first line aircraft carriers. Well, because in the movie, it was the Japanese who were the bad guys. If there was a Japanese version of the movie, it would probably look the other way. During World War II, the atoll became an important strategic objective for the Japanese forces to securitize the Pacific. After the war, Midway's importance as a commercial airbase quickly diminished, especially after the Vietnam War. They didn't need this outpost in the middle of nowhere anymore. So in 1988, Midway became a national wildlife refuge. Number 9. Kingman Reef The reef is located about 920 miles southwest of Honolulu. There isn't much going on around here. It was first sighted in 1798 by American Edmund Fanning. It was a U.S. naval reservation in 1934 for commercial purposes, like seaplanes flying between Hawaii and Samoa. In 2000, the U.S. Navy transferred the responsibility of the reef to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and was later declared a U.S. National Wildlife Refuge. Number 10. Palmyra Atoll this place lies south of Kingman Reef. The atoll received its name from the American vessel Palmyra, under the command of Captain Saul, who sought shelter there on November 7, 1802. It was first under the Hawaiian flag, then Hawaii became part of the U.S., so technically it became a U.S. territory. It looks nice, filled with natural beauty, but you wouldn't be able to live here unless you're like a crazy wealthy billionaire who goes around buying private islands. I'm pretty sure you can work out a deal with the US government. Just kidding. Number 11. Jarvis Island. The next territory, located in the West Central Pacific Ocean, took different names. Volunteer Island, Bunker Island, Brook Island, Jervis Island, and now it is named Jarvis Island. Famous for its coral atoll or the formation of corals, this island was first discovered by a British ship, Eliza Francis by Captain Brown. In 1856, through Guano Act, or every unclaimed island containing guano deposits will be in the possession of the United States. But in 1889, Britain claimed the island, and then the US reclaimed it in 1935. What a turnout of events for this island. Now, it is part of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument and home to seabirds and shorebirds migrating. Number 12. Baker Island This also lies in the South Pacific Ocean, about 1,650 miles southwest of Honolulu. In 1936, it came under the administration of the U.S. Department of the Interior. There isn't much here. It was occupied by the Allied forces during World War II. The island is uninhabited, except for periodic visits by scientists that do a lot of research stuff. There are a lot of birds here though. If you love birds, you can go there and see a couple thousand. Number 13. Howland Island Located in the North Pacific Ocean, the island is tiny at just 1.84 square kilometers or 455 acres and 6.4 kilometers of coastline. When the U.S. took possession of it in 1857, there was no one there. The British and the American companies mined there around the second half of the 19th century though. Until now, it remains uninhabited. It's a sad piece of land with no trees and no fresh water. Just don't go there at all. Number 14. Navassa Island According to the U.S. Department of the Interior, Navassa became a U.S. insular area in October 1857 when a representative of the Baltimore Fertilizer Company took possession of the island in the name of the United States 
under the Guano Act of August 18, 1856. On September 1999, it was declared a wildlife refuge. It's uninhabited. The only thing living there is wildlife. Alright everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to World IQ. I hope your curiosity was piqued by this video. There's a bigger story on the history and culture of the main territories, and if there's enough demand for it, we'll make one. If you like videos about islands, check out our video about the best islands to retire to.